Hey guys, welcome to another revision video. Today I'm going to cover some basics of addition polymerization, specifically regarding alkenes because they like to ask you about it. So I know some of you guys have your exams coming up soon, specifically the paper for theory exam for chemistry, so that's what we're going to be covering. And so this request came from one of my Patreons, a Patreon who just specifically asked if I could just make a video on addition polymerization uh, because he was just having a few difficulties on that. So I hope this video clears things up. So here I just want to go through the very basics of addition polymerization when it comes to alkenes. I think what's really important is if I were to just uh, simply draw out a couple of things here. If you've got an alkene which obviously will contain some carbon to carbon double bonds, right? So whatever it maybe you're going to get some sort of double bond like this and you'll get some attachments there. So for example, this is a very, very simple uh, ethene molecule, okay? So an ethene molecule, when it comes to the polymerization of it, what you're simply going to do is going to break apart this double bond and so what you'll get is something along the lines of this. But now that the double bond is broken, these each of these two carbon molecules need one extra bond attached to it. So you're going to have that, and you're going to bracket that, and you're going to put N. Now N means that this is the specific repeating molecule that's going to be repeated throughout the, uh, the polymer, essentially. So if the question states that they want you to draw two repeating units, then all you have to do is draw two of these attached to each other. So what would what you would do then would be something like this. So this one unit and that's two units. Okay, so you can see this is the first unit and this is the second unit. And you can see that these monomers are going to be repeating throughout the entire structure continuously with an n amount of times, however many monomers there are. Um, if I were to just uh, delete these, um, we're going to look at a more, I suppose, complex example because that's a very, very simple ethene molecule. But what if you have something that's uh, not ethene and has a few more carbon atoms and things like that, okay? So let's just rub this out and uh, go ahead with uh, trying with something else. So for example, if you had a molecule, maybe that looked like this, okay? So it's still um, an alkene, but you might have something that looks like this, okay? So what if they asked you to build, uh, I suppose, the, 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 the formula of a polymer of this particular alkene? What would you do then? Now, in these instances, it's always easier to group the particular uh, atoms together, okay? So what I mean by that is here, if you take a look at the second carbon, okay, you can see that it's first of all attached to one of the hydrogen molecules, but it is also then attached to this bunch of structures here. Instead of drawing that all out individually, what I would instead do is actually simplify that into something like this, where you can draw it as CH, that stays exactly the same, you draw the double bond, and then you draw the C, and then you draw the H, so that's referring to this one here, and then instead of doing the whole individual atoms of the rest of the structure, you simply go CH2, referring to this bit, this bit here, and then CH3, referring to this end bit. Okay, now this looks a lot more simplified, and it's much easier for us to then build the polymer from this instead. So then what we have to do is just join it up. Oh, I don't know why that keeps happening. Um, Let's see if I can just delete that. Okay, so all we have to do then is if we just move this along, oops, to the side, if we were going to make a polymer 
formula out of this. Then all we're going to do is again break the double bond. So to turn that into a single bond, draw the H's together and just draw whatever we drew before. Except this time the double bond is broken so it extends out from each of the two carbons. Bracket that and put the symbol in. And there this is the poly uh, this is the monomer of the polymer that we just drew so this is the repeating unit now if they say draw two repeating units all we have to do is draw these two monomers together so for instance in our case it's going to be um, something like uh, ch which is what we drew above ch ch2 ch3 and so that's the first unit and here is the second unit. Here we go. We drew we drew two units of the monomer. So I hope that makes sense. I think the key here is just grouping these up and together. So I mean you don't necessarily have to. You could draw it out individually like what it was before. So instead of going CH2, CH3 and simplifying that, you could have uh, just went like this. So CH2 CH3 like that and repeated the whole thing but again that just makes it a little bit more complicated and it's more difficult to draw and even if you were to simplify it like I did here the examiners cannot, cannot mark you wrong for that. Okay so uh, let's go through a couple of real life examples and uh, how we approach that so let's uh, swap that over. Here they ask that petroleum is a source of many important chemicals. So name two industrial processes that must take place to produce alkenes from petroleum. And so that's of course fractional distillation and cracking. Um, here ethane, C2, CH2, uh, CH2 and propane can both be converted into polymers. Again all alkenes can be converted into polymers and both ethane and protein, uh, propane sorry, is of course a pol uh, is, is an ethene, uh, sorry an alkene that can be transferred or transformed into a polymer. So what type of polymerization takes place when ethene forms a polymer? We've looked at that and that is of course the whole topic of this video, addition polymerization. So the empirical formula of the polymer formed from ethene is CH2 because the molecular formula is C2H4 but if you were to convert that ratio into the most simplest form then that simply becomes CH2. Now here is the key question here. Propene has the structural formula CH2, double bond CH, CH3. Draw two repeating units of the polymer made from propene. And uh, this is exactly what we looked at before and we took um, a look at the example ahead but um, ultimately if we were to draw this out into its structure what it would look like would be this here. Right, so if this is a propane Okay, all we need to do is convert this into a polymer and draw two repeating units. So therefore, what we would do is exactly what we did before. You break apart the double bond. So I'm going to rub out the double bond and make that into a single bond. And now that it's a single bond, this is the repeating unit. Okay, so once you break apart the single bond, then what you'll do is give it two individual bonds ahead. And then since this is the first repeating unit, you simply just need to draw another one of those to fulfill the two marks that they're offering you there and give them the answer of two repeating units. Here is the first unit and here is the second unit. Um, so very similar question here. Alkene C can be converted into a polymer. And so what type of polymerization is this? This is of course addition polymerization. The name of the polymer is poly bracket but one in. It's uh, simply poly because there's many of it and bracketed with but one in because this is but one in. And that's because there's four carbons and four is but and it has a double bond so it must be an alkene so therefore butene and the one is symbolizing the fact that the double bond is existent within the first carbon or the first two carbons here as you can see. So complete the chemical equation to show the polymerization that is occurring here and so again 
um, if we wanted to make a polymer out of this molecule, very simple, you break apart the double bond so it becomes a single bond, you draw in everything else exactly the same way, and you give it the two single bonds there, and then you bracket that and give it the N. So you put the N there, and the N is just suggesting that there are many of these individual repeating units that are, uh, that are combined with each other in this polymer molecule. And let's just take a look at one last question here. They give you six of these different organic compounds and they just ask you to, uh, to draw two repeating units of the addition polymer form from A. Okay, so here I've already converted into the form of which it is a polymer. Uh, but they specifically ask you to draw two repeating units. So again, all you have to do is just draw two of these repeating units. Okay. So that's one repeating unit. Okay, so here with this is the first unit, and here is the second unit. And so this would have been theoretically your final answer. Okay, so the steps are just as, uh, as we've discussed before, you take a look at the alkene molecule, and then you break apart the double bond. Now that double bond, where you find that double bond, the two carbons that you have the original double bond, those two carbons are the ones that are going to be in the, the, the that are going to be part of the monomer that you find. So therefore, since this is where the double bond exists, this is why the monomer looks like this, or the repeating unit. And once you've got the repeating unit sorted, then it's very easy when they ask you to do or draw two repeating units because you just need to draw two of the monomer that you found. And so that's how you answer these questions. Very, very simple and straightforward. Um, thank you for watching guys. If there's any sort of questions uh, that you have, then just make sure you to comment below and I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. I've been really busy, so I haven't been able to pump out that many videos, but uh, feel free to comment whenever and uh, I, hope you, uh, I hope to see you in the next video.